Um, this isn't a surprise this mm. afternoon that a speaker hasn't been elected. Um, it was expected. Uh, it happened back in 2019 uh, when I was the First Minister as well. There was a yeah. speaker who refused to be elected at that stage by Sinn Féin, so it happened. Uh, but I think the key thing is the protocol. Um, because it is disrupting the operation of the Belfast Agreement, there's yeah. a real need for it to be sorted out, Nana. So can, it, can, can the Assembly function without a Speaker? Or will, is that what happens? No, the, the Assembly can't function without a Speaker. That's why it needs to be sorted out as quickly oh, right, as possible. Okay, okay so. Yeah. And is, is that something they'll do? Um, what is it? Everyone votes and they, there's just a, a... No, because in Northern Ireland, again, and this is different, obviously, from Scotland and Wales, there yeah. has to be a cross-community vote. So, in other words, a majority of unionism and a majority of nationalism have to agree right. that... Mr. X or Mrs. X should be the speaker, and they weren't able to do that today. See, now, okay, so just briefly, because I know people hear a lot about Northern Ireland Protocol, yeah. what is it? it? Very briefly, just explain it to somebody who's watching that keeps hearing about it and doesn't quite get it. Sure, so the Northern Ireland Protocol was agreed. It had two functions. First of all, to protect the European Union single market, to stop goods coming across from Great Britain into Northern Ireland and then seeping into the Republic of Ireland, which of course is still in the European single market. Mm -hmm. And secondly, it was meant to uh, secure the Belfast Agreement. And of course, it hasn't done that. It's actually done the opposite. It's caused real societal and economic damage. And of course, the Belfast is the Good Friday Agreement. The Good, as the well. good Friday yeah. Agreement. Some people call it the Good Friday yeah. Agreement, but it's actually the Belfast Agreement is its official title. Mm -hmm. I see. So what will, so if, if, for example, just say, for example, we scrap, we said, OK, we're going to scrap it. Yeah. The, 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 the people would all have to agree that it would be scrapped. No, the UK government is sovereign in Northern Ireland, okay. so they can decide what they're going to do. And I think a lot of people have been oh. talking about if they do that, then that'll cause a trade war in uh, Europe. Well, actually, under the... And this is where it gets pretty technical. Under the WTO rules, it actually only uh, they are only able to take action which is proportionate to the harm that is caused by removing the protocol. And there won't be any harm by removing the protocol because there's a minimal risk to the single market from goods coming across from Great Britain into Northern Ireland. Very few of those goods go into the European single market and those, those goods that do that mm. can be checked remotely. They don't need to be checked at the border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. They can be checked through digital processes and alternative arrangements. So what's the objection then? What, if, if that's so straightforward and from the way you've explained it, it sounds perfectly logical. Why are the EU, where's the bit with the EU? What is the issue there? Well, the issue is the European Union has always used Northern Ireland as a sort of a tool to kick the UK for mm. having the temerity to leave the European Union, if I'm frank about it. And there's always been difficulties there. Um, and they have said very clearly they don't want a border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. Uh, I think by that they mean they don't want a physical border. We don't have a physical mm. border anymore. That left us when the Troubles left Northern Ireland. That was the reasons why we had a physical border. In terms of the differences in VAT and in, in terms of st sterling and euros, we still have that border there. So it works in respect of uh, currency. It works in respect of VAT. So why can't it work in terms of goods that come from Great Britain and then go into the Republic? of Ireland through Northern Ireland. It can work for, very well, but there isn't the will to make it work in Anna, and that's the fundamental problem. And the will is coming from the European Union? The will's not coming from the European Union. The will not to, let it the, the will not to change it. Uh, and I think government has finally come to the point where they're saying, we've tried to negotiate, we put down a command paper in July of last year, we told you we want what we wanted and what we needed to see for the sovereignty of our own country, but the European Union is keeping their heads in the sands and hoping it'll go away. But it'll not go away. And we've seen that now, unfortunately, through the fact that we don't have a Northern Ireland Assembly operating. Interesting. Well, well, very, very briefly, the people of Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, where do they stand? Would they... Uh, do they have an issue with it? Well, you see, the problem with the Belfast Agreement is that it said that you had to have consent of the unionist community and the nationalist community. The nationalist community, because uh, they want to look south to Dublin, are content with the protocol. But for the unionist community in Northern Ireland and everybody that represents the unionist community in Northern Ireland, they want to see the protocol fundamentally changed because it's damaging that link between Great Britain and Northern Ireland.